And good morning, everybody. Welcome to Jason Mackey's First 10, a quick hit podcast to get you ready for the day. Today is Tuesday, July 2nd, and yesterday we saw the start of NHL free agency well around the National Hockey League, not so much here. It's a little quiet for the Penguins, which we're obviously going to get into. The Pirates also start a three-game series with the Cardinals at PNC Park. Mitch Keller on the mound for Game 1. Before we do that, I want to remind you that we're sponsored by the North Shore Tavern. You don't have to be a baseball fan to love it there. The interior is wall-to-wall pirates. They're appetizers, entrees, cocktails, and, of course, steak and seafood on a sizzling lava stone. Open every day. The North Shore Tavern across from PNC Park is Pittsburgh's home for steak on a stone. So our lead topic today is obviously the Penguins, um, what is typically a very exciting day around here. Even last year, the Penguins pushing, doing things, a lot of excitement. Not so much this time around. Uh, Matt Grizzlick was probably their biggest addition. Blake Lazat, the only player they signed for multiple years. Ryan Shea and Emil Bemstrom are back. Um, Riley Smith is gone. Uh, Anthony Bavillier in. I don't know. Are you with me? I I can't follow this, Uh, and I want to get into maybe what it means. The column I have right now on postgazette.com talks about Sidney Crosby and what this means for him. I was up in Cranberry today and asked Kyle Dubas what his conversations have been like with Sid. I was curious if he was going to offer anything about Sid being on board with this. It's probably a bit of a tough ask. I don't think Sid's going to go anywhere. He's too proud, loves it here. And I don't think he's going to quit on the Penguins. It's just like, I don't think Gino's going to. I don't think Chris Letang's going to. I don't think Mike Sullivan's going to. I think this is sort of the deal that they made. At the same time, if you're Sid, you want to win. And are the Penguins better positioned to do that? Are they aptly positioned to do that? I think that's a fair question. And I'm not sure I saw anything today that makes me feel a whole heck of a lot better about it. Or in the past couple of days. I mean, Kevin Hayes isn't necessarily an answer. If anything, hearing Kyle Dubas talk and sort of setting the boundary for what the Penguins could be, how they're going to be operating, the things they're prioritizing. I probably feel worse about how they're going to be competitive in 2024 and 2025. Now, I think there's a couple key areas, and this really, from somebody that covered the Pirates, rebuilding and changing and this, that, and the other, it it feels like the same thing all over again, where Kyle Dubas is talking about internal improvement. Again, he's not wrong. And it's an important facet of what they're doing. Part of what he talked about, Ricard Raquel, saying they believe he can have a bounce back year. David Quinn can relate to Eric Carlson. That was more of a discussion point in Las Vegas. Don't disagree with either one, but the Penguins need that big time. I don't know how they go anywhere if those things don't happen. One thing that worries me today that I thought they were going to get done and they didn't, who's playing next to Sid right now? I mean, Brian Rust, probably. Your second line is probably best constituted as Gino between Raquel and Michael Bunting, I would think. That group kind of found some traction at the end of last season. Is Kevin Hayes your fourth line center? Lars Eller the third? I'm not sure how else you align and comport yourselves as, as dangerous. I mean, it could be Drew O'Connor, and that's great. Maybe Drew O'Connor morphs into a 20 or 30 goal score. That'd be fantastic. Penguins wouldn't turn it down. I'm not sure I'd want to bet on it. Blake Lazat, I mean, okay. Two years, $1.8 million, something like that. Has spent part of the last six seasons with the Kings. Skated in 81 games in 2022-2023. That's his claim to fame. Had back-to-back seasons, double-digit goals, only 7-62 in 62 last year. Not exactly somebody I'd be pegging for regular time at this point, right? Like, you want to see the Penguins be able to score more goals, create more cushion. I don't know if they did that. I actually don't hate the Matt Grizzlick side. Just to offer a couple thoughts on that, it's $2.75 million. It's kind of what they need. They need a little bit more on the left side of their defense. Now, I caught some grief on Twitter for this, and I understand why people pointing out that he's a healthy scratch, and I realize that the signing is not sexy. Uh, But, again, if you need to balance out a pair with Chris Letang and Eric Carlson, they're not asking Matt Grizzlick to do much. They're not asking him to make outlet passes. They're not asking him to start the rush (laughs) lug the puck up the ice, do anything special. Just be in position and defend. And Grizzlick has done that before. He also has a history with David Quinn, Boston University. I think that probably counts for something. He's two years removed from setting career highs in assists and points in 2022, 2023. Okay. I don't hate it. Anthony Bavillier is another lottery ticket that I think it could be something. The Penguins are using proving ground or using playing time as a proving ground. He's he's had a couple... A couple moments, but I'm not sure how 
Big time it is. Going to pause and deliver a message from some of our friends in Bradenton uh, that you know about yesterday. And I'm going to get back to a little bit more hockey talk before finishing up with the Pirates. Embrace the laid back charm of island life while sinking your toes in the sand and discovering real authentic Florida in the Bradenton area. Unspoiled beauty and pristine beaches, a vibrant waterfront downtown energized by local arts and culture, fresh Floribian cuisine with a flourish of rich history, and friendly locals ready to welcome you to this preserved paradise on Florida's Gulf Coast. Plan your visit today at BradentonGulfIslands.com. All right, welcome back to Jason Mackey's First 10. I want to talk about a couple things outside of the Penguins as well that I found interesting. One is a guy with some ties to Pittsburgh, Jake Gensel. How about his situation, huh? Nine years, $63 million, go play for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Good deal for Jake. Probably a good situation for Tampa. Interesting situation, though. If you've been following that, Steven Stamkos was their guy. Um, kind of shown the door, not extended last season. Uh, not really given much of anything this offseason. They just went in a different direction. Julian Breezebois decided to uh, pivot what they're doing. Uh, completely understandable. It's a business. I understand. I don't think Stamkos was very happy about it, but um, Jake's taken over for that guy and obviously is in a very talented team in Tampa. Some of his comments sort of alluded to how much they're going for it every year and how competitive they always are. The Lightning are always going to be a team to monitor. We'll get into a little bit of the division talk, but – the team that I think I liked the best today, the Nashville Predators. Stamkos, they had him on a four-year deal with an $8 million AAV. Jonathan Marcheseau as well signs with the Preds five years with a $5.5 million AAV. And Brady Shea also signed seven years, seven over seven. Um, really impressed um, what Barry Trotz has done. He, he seems to get the whole GM thing. Um, you know what I don't like, though? Look around the Metropolitan Division. It's not great. It's not great if you're looking at it from a Penguins perspective. Um, Washington making moves. Jacob Chikrin, Matt Roy, the Devils signed Brendan Dillon, Brett Pesci after trading for Jacob Markstrom. The Blue Jackets, they reunite Johnny Gaudreau with Sean Monaghan. Um, just a lot of stuff going on. It seems like every other team in the Metro got better. I'm not sure the Penguins did. They're counting on a lot of internal improvements. Maybe unrealistic. We'll see. want to finish up with some Pirates stuff and – this is a sneaky big homestand, a really big series against the Cardinals, who, by the way, have been darn good. They started 15, 15 and 24. They're 28 and 16 since. Only the Houston Astros have more wins. They've done it with pitching. Um, they have the fourth lowest ERA in that time. That's since May 12th. They've just been pitching it extremely, extremely well. However, the Pirates are going to miss St. Louis's two big horses, Lance Lynn, Sonny Gray, both about a three, four and change ERA during that time. Pirates lock out. They're not going to see them. So chance to capitalize. You'd certainly like to take two of three against a division foe at home. They get the Mets this weekend. The Mets are also, they've been really good. Six and four in their last 10, 40 and 41 overall. It's not going to be easy whatsoever. I'll be curious to see if a couple trends continue. And by the way, if you haven't already, check out Noah Hiles' June report card. I really enjoyed that. That's a solid read as always. But one of the biggest storylines in June for me and the Pirates, Rowdy Telez, Brian Reynolds. Those were their offense, their sources of offense, I should say, at least consistently. New month, do they continue? I'd like to think so. Reynolds hitting streak came to an end, but we know that's in there. Rowdy Telez has been in a much different place since meeting up with his friend Xander in Toronto. I'm going to be curious to see what those guys do and need some more from guys as well. Right? Isn't that a huge storyline with the Pirates right now? How do they bring out more offense from Key Brian Hayes? I believe it's like 219 since he was uh, recalled or brought back from some of the back issues. Went four for eight in Atlanta. That was encouraging, right? But Michael A. Taylor, Jack Sawinski, woof. I get asked every day about Jack Sawinski. Why is he on this team? What's he adding? Michael A. Taylor, I can present a pretty decent argument for. You saw it at the end of the final game of the Braves series. He has defense. Like you might not start him all the time, but you can bring him in as a defensive replacement when you have a lead. It's not a terrible play. I get that. But what happens beyond that? I don't know. G1 Bay monster game tonight, by the way, had three glorious catches, went one for four with a double. I do believe just Jack to me looks like somebody who needs unplugged and needs a chance to work at some things. I'm not sure they agree with me, but we shall see. Another point in that Noah story that I really enjoyed was some numbers on the Pirates starting pitching. 
They've been dominant, the best in the National League, and the Pirates naturally are going to want to see that come in or continue, I should say, into July. All right, that does it for me today. Make sure you like and subscribe. You can get this video. We'll probably be talking a little bit more Pirates with that series starting and the NHL stuff dying down a little bit. Looking forward to getting into that with you. Again, like and subscribe. You can get all of this content and more from other Post Gazette writers and columnists and all those fun people. We'll be back here same time, same place. Talk to you then. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.